Okay, this is part three of the graph editor and animation tutorial, and we're almost done with the basics, so you can kind of just work within here and have fun. But notice over here, I have this little window popped up to the side like this here, and that you get with the end key, just like that. That's completely different than the end key up here, so it's dependent on the window that you're in. So let's go full screen on this for a second, because this is really the best way to work, is having access to this window. You can just grab it right here like this and expand it up like this. So I have the, here's our, cyclic keyframes that I have set. I can press G and move them around like this. It's kind of change the shape as I go. Very powerful and convenient, right? Or I can press S, maybe on X, scale it on X, just kind of like the regular editing window. So you can just play around in here and try and get the effects that you want. But this is really powerful stuff over here. So now you can repeat the motion after so many cycles, right? So like this, or you can restrict the, let's go back to here, and let's restrict the frame range, say I set an upper frame range at 250, like this, and a lower range at 50. I mean, this starts to become intuitive right away, right, and then you can set your interpolation mode here. We were at linear in the last one, but now just go to Bezier like that. And let's go back into the window and see what the animation looks like when I run it. Okay, there it goes, very simple, okay, right? And then over here, remember we had turned these off so we can have access to those if we want them. So there's just a lot of possibilities. You know, we could come into this and set rotation keyframes, maybe I just set I off rotation like that. It sets a rotation, you can look at the channels that are set. And the only one that's set is uh, this blue channel down here. It shows up as purple, right? But it's I think it's because it's sitting on top of the other keyframe. Let me grab, let me grab it. Turn those off, X and Y. See if I can grab it here. There it is there. Okay, gee, yeah, there was sitting on top of the other colors, made it not look blue. So there's, I can move that like that. So there's a lo lot of power just doing that. So that's really all you need to know as far as just getting started, because this is really the best way to work with your animations. Instead of moving an object up to here and setting the eye key and moving it over to here and setting the eye and trying to time it that way, you just work within here and you time it visually. And that should still have those keyframes that it does from before. All right, so then what we'll do, we'll kind of set up what we're going to do for the next lesson. And I'll just let you practice this stuff for a while, because as you can see, there's it's not a whole lot to it once you see what is available and then we'll get into the more advanced stuff later on but we'll just continue with the basics and in the next lesson what we'll do is we'll get back here and we'll start using the shape keys because that's really how a lot of this animation takes place you take an object and let's say you don't move it at all and all you do you start controlling the shape as we go remember how we took the shape keys from the other lessons we made like a bunch of keys and this was the base key like this and then we went into key one here went into edit mode like that maybe I grabbed these two vertices like this and moved it over like that to change that shape and it's automatically changing that shape I'll leave edit mode now and it's even with this value set at zero we don't see the shape but if I drive it up to one you see the shape takes place like this okay so we'll go to sh you know key two I'll go back into edit mode, maybe I'll just select them all, maybe I'll just press S. It, it's basically based on that basis shape there. And then I'll, le I'll go back into edit mode. Now key two is set, and if I move that, it goes from the basis shape, which is here, to whatever this one is. So it doesn't go to, it doesn't go to key one, key two, key three. It just goes from the basic shape to key two, or the basis to key one. All right, and then let's, do, oh, well, since we're already here, let's just do it. We're already doing it. We're in key three. We'll just go into here. I'll grab these here. I'll just grab all these on this side, and I'll move, I'll move those out like this. All right, and I've just set it. Even though I leave edit mode, it doesn't look set, but if I go back into edit mode, it is set, and then you can verify it here. So this tells you what percentage of the transformation is taking place from the basis shape to whatever you're key shape is like that okay so then what we'll do in the next lesson we'll go back and we'll work with the action editor because we remember we're in the graph editor but we want to work with the action editor and then what we'll do is we'll combine 
everything all together. But better yet, just for the time being, just go play around with all this stuff for a while and just become familiar with it. It won't take long at all because if you've gone through my 200 plus uh, Blender tutorials already, uh, you must be a pretty good user by now, I quite suspect. Yes, indeed. All right. All right. I'll see you in the next lesson.